Excuse us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> One, two. One day, I broke a glass in my bedroom and simply covered it with a bath towel. It remained undiscovered for weeks. <laughs> Okay, uh, first, first of all, I was a witness of this. And you know how I witnessed this? I was, um, I think I was sleeping over at Leah's at the time. Yes. And I'm like, oh, that's your, that's your room. I think it was like the first time or something. Like the first time I was like, oh, that's your room. That's cool. And then I'm about to step on something and she's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, what the f- <laughs> and there's just like a towel. <laughs> so, <laughs> this, this is the most chaotic energy I've ever heard, like in my entire life, that I've ever felt. So this is Leah for you. It's like, because literally. I broke it like super late, and I didn't want to clean it up. And I also didn't want to step on it if I had to go to the bathroom. So I just put okay, the can you can you please can you? No, no, no. Please, I, I think it. it's the. It's so ridiculous. It's like one of the most ridiculous excuses because it's been there like four weeks, Leah. Exactly, like exactly, four weeks. exactly. Four weeks. So you're you. like, no. Oh my god. Classic Leah, though. It's Classic too much. Leo. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a victim. I was a victim in this. <laughs> and it was a really big glass, you know, like the Coca Cola McDonald's glass. So there was really a lot of like. Uh, Shards, you know, it was too really... specific at this point. This is way too specific. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you remember which glass it was. I really remember. I, I feel oh like God. the more you give details, the worse it is for you. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like, please. So, you know, for, for all these people that are really super ashamed of, you know, having company for the first time, this, you know, it can be worse than this. Literally. Literally, it can't. So... Uh, <laughs> Voila. Oh, I agree. Oh. oh my god. Um, my anecdote is less uh, controversial, if I can say. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird to say that about a broken glass. But yeah, yesterday I had like a very nice day. I went out with my friend. We went to this secondhand shop, and I was like, "Oh, that's so cool! Now I can go home." And I was like so hungry, like I was like really excited about dinner, but I was like, I'm gonna order something on Deliveroo. And like, next thing you know, you know, I'm on the app and like, I'm like, I'm gonna have some Thai food. And like, I order my food, like it was roast duck or something like mm-hmm. that, something like pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that when the guys come over, I forgot to order rice. I forgot to order rice and I was like so pissed off. Like it's so annoying when you order something from Deliveroo and like the rice is not included, but you have like to pick as a, a side dish, you know? Mm. So the thing is, like I ordered my food way before all my flatmates got my food and then ended up cooking rice for half an hour because I needed like a side for my dish. I was like so pissed off and I was like, this is literally karma. Karma Claire. is like doing something yeah, to well, me. I don't know what I've done. No, Claire, I don't know Claire. what I've done. This is the most first world problem I've ever heard in my life. Like, I don't want to be that person. I want to be the people are dying around the world. <laughs> Seriously. You just said they forgot my rice. I had to cook rice and this is your they problem of the week. Rice. <laughs> no, but Please. you don't understand. It's you like your you're rice. like you don't know what happened. You don't know what happened. I, I like, know what happened. You just said it. I'm telling you this, this first one. No, but like, seriously, you don't know how hungry I, I was, how hungry I was, and I was, I was, how much I was, like, really looking forward to this food. And, like, basically, we had, like, people over at our flat, and I was just, like, sighing whenever someone ringed at the door because I thought it was my food. I was incredibly rude to one of my flatmate boyfriend because I was just like, oh, it's just him on the phone and open the door because I was waiting for this food. And then so I didn't have what, my rice, Muriel. That's why you didn't get your rice, Claire, I think. You know, like that's... I don't know. Maybe, no, yeah. Right. Maybe because I was rude. But I was yeah, hungry, yeah. people. Listen, rude people listen, it's no just... rice. No rice no, for no, no. people. It's just... No, it's just the blind leading the blind. It's Leah giving advice nah, <laughs> to nah, Claire nah. after this one story about glass on your the towel, like... And the tower told me she was rude, so no rice. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going, like, my anecdote, I'm going to give some context. And it's, you know, not like yours. 
I would say mine is pretty legit because yours is just your chaotic energy, uh, you know, acting out at this point. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so, um, so some context. I got my Netflix account maybe nine months to a year after its introduction on the French market. And I can say it wasn't hard, you know, at first to give up my life of free streaming <laughs> that I've led <laughs> ever since I've been hanging out on the internet. But I would say like overall, it's worth it. Um, and uh, I know that like a lot of people kind of complain about the whole, you know, Netflix catalog. But I'm just saying that because <laughs> basically... Uh, I was reminded of my previous, my, my past piracy life because of my friend Sarah, because she's been trying out K-dramas on my recommendation. And uh, of course, I had to wreck her the one K-drama that isn't on Netflix on, for some reason. And so let me tell you, <laughs> spending 10 minutes on the phone with her trying to navigate sketchy websites with ads that definitely install some malwares on both our devices. Plus, I had to explain to her, like, what a VPN was, how to get access to even more dodgiest websites at the end, you know? Like, I was like, you know what? No, it's good to be on the side of the law. <laughs> so, basically, that's my anecdote. This is... I agree. No, but this I is think, just... like, Netflix totally killed all of the free streaming website and even, like, DDL website. I feel there's nobody, like, to maintain it, to maintain those websites anymore because they're like, it's not worth it anymore. and all these old streaming websites we used to have, like for anime or even like American shows, they're all gone. They're really all gone. I don't know what happened to them. Yeah, but, but do well... you remember as well, like all those people who've been like working on the subtitles? <laughs> like, what do they do now? They're what gone. do they yeah. do? They do subtitling well, for Netflix, maybe because you can. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Sometimes you see, you know, the the name of the person who translated it. Like, especially for K-dramas, they're like, translated yeah. by blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, thanks, dude. Like, <laughs> thank you. Who you sustain me. Thank you this. for your hard work. <laughs> exactly. And so, yeah, I think that's the perfect segue um, for this week's episode. So, yeah. welcome to Missing Sounds. I'm one of your hosts, Muriel Vincent, and I'm here with my two best friends, Claire Kingi and Leanna Cash. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Here's the rundown for this week's episode. So we go back on the Netflix's controversy that surrounded this year's Oscars, as it's now clearer than ever that there is an opposition from the elite cinema and overall Hollywood establishment to Netflix. Will this brace Netflix's development in the film industry? And will we see directors and actors pass on roles because of it? What do you guys think? Yeah, I think it's like really well done, by the way, for the summary. I'm like, wow, this is so good. Like New York Times worthy. <laughs> I worked on it. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is lit, girl. <laughs> this is uh, the first episode, first of all. So I had to, you know, make you think this is going to be <laughs> how it is from now on. But it's not. Anyways, go ahead. But yeah, because... I had to talk about it because of the Spielberg interview, or at least what the Indie Wire reported mm -hmm. about Netflix and how they infl infiltrated basically all this award ceremony, um, especially like the Academy Award ceremony because it was the Oscar last week and we all remember that Roma was really, really well expected and quite well received by critics in general. Mm -hmm. Which kind of makes sense why uh, Officer Quarren got uh, the Best Director Award for Roma. And yeah, it kind of makes me concerned about like the latest statement of uh, Steven Spielberg, who's like one of the best directors probably like that we had so far. And him, like, basically having this crusade against Netflix. Uh, and the fact that he's going to be part of the board of governor, like, reuniting in April to decide whether or not Netflix should be allowed to present his movies in, in awards like the Oscars, like, really makes me concern, concern about the future of the cinema industry. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but I agree. I don't get uh because I'm out of my cave and what's his problem really like why why is it a problem that a movie produced by Netflix if it's if it it's rises just... up to the standard expected for this kind of award ceremony which is by the way we can discuss also because sometimes movies are nominated or movies wins and you're like what 
But what yeah, what is his I... problem? Like, is it just jealous because uh, Netflix stole by? I, I don't know. Like for, for me, is it what like I touched on? I don't, get, I don't get the problem at all. No, I think it's what I touched on. Um, you know, uh, in the summary, for me, it's more like a problem of like elite cinema being like press basically because of netflix they're like Sinuance oh no we don't we don't Spielberg understand elite like cinema i mean it is it, it is it is elite it is cinema i think it roma is, is more of elite I, cinema than spielberg movie are because roma is like engaged on a particular topic while spielberg is like big entertainment kind of movie no i agree i'm not talking about spielberg in itself but the yeah. fact that spielberg is recognized by um the whole uh, establishment led by by Hollywood and by the Oscars which is for elite cinema i understand that you also have some blockbusters getting recognized but you still like for a blockbuster to be nominated you still have to fall into some you know specific um criter criteria so i would say it's more about the whole um we don't want things to change and uh because of that yeah. we're just gonna you know but basically it doesn't make sense I, I would roma, say roma is an elite sure. movie it's not an entertainment so it totally fits into the norms and criteria of this kind of award so what's really what's his problem it's not like they're nominating i would say nine nine at the oscars you know so i don't get i don't get what's wrong yeah but I, I think i, I think would it, say Leah, yeah in a way that for me it's like kind of an opposition like to put it grossly in society would be mm. like this heritage family like you know the family that are well established would be like the studios in hollywood mm -hmm. and then you would have like netflix who's like kind of a new player in a way mm. uh who are like kind of perceived as like the new rich and like even though they're doing something great it's just like you're not from our breed because you're like a new player and like you're you're basically not in the theaters and you're not like one of the big studios like universal or paramount and or 20th century century 2020 i can't remember the name century, right now yeah, yeah. yeah. i always said like century 21 <laughs> which is like real estate <laughs> uh but yeah I think it's more where like Steven Spielberg is coming from in a way, because even like the arguments that he that he comes with comes with, sorry, are not really valid. Some of the studios say like Netflix spending too much money on some films, and I'm just like, this is uh, it's not like you don't have any yeah, money. You do cool. spend money as well, so it's not a valid point, I but think. Leah, Leah, to 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 get back on what you were saying about Roma, mm. I think it could have been any film. It's not about Roma being, you know, by Quaron or not being an indie movie or not. It's just about like the topic didn't matter. It's just like Claire said about the whole um, digital thing, and also don't forget that Netflix. Um, like people watch Netflix, yes, on their computer, but also on their TV. And so there's also this clash of medium for them. It's like not, you know, as good as, um, the big screen, uh, which doesn't make any sense then, now when you see the quality of Netflix. But anyways, yes, like for them, it's still like, no, we don't want that. At least to me. Because I, there's, I, I'm not really aware, but there's nothing in those kind of, um, ceremonies that say that movie has to go on the big screen to be selected do they like if they had this particular criteria i could understand um, uh, i'm not, I'm not but sure if it's something i think something they do they're gonna, it's something they're gonna actually like go for then in, in order to especially like exclude netflix or or this new kind of movie that actually are actually there is this there is actually a rule stating that the movie needs to appear in the theaters but Netflix did respect it because uh, Roma was actually screened in several theaters mm. in the oh. US, maybe not in all the countries, but they did it specifically because they wanted to be no granted this nomination at the Oscar. And um, yeah, so they did respect that. It wasn't available everywhere, but they did respect it. So I don't really know where it's coming from. It's also so... I mean, just I know where it's coming from. But... They just feel threatened. That's yeah. It. It's also so hypocritical because in the end, uh, for me, it's also this, the, what we're talking about, it's part of a bigger conversation about what's relevant to, um, to award, you know, at a ceremony like the Oscars. Like it used to be way more popular back in the day. And these days it's like, 
okay, some movies are maybe out everywhere in the US, but they're not part of, you know, everyday's conversation for people because they're too indie or maybe people don't have the time to watch all of these movies. And so when you have like big blockbuster um, with, you know, somewhat some quality or even a lot of quality like Black Panther and they, because they don't want to um, recognize their talents, they, they were thinking of like maybe adding a category like, you know, like we did mm -hmm. for the César in France, which was like the the Oscar of the public or whatever. It's so yeah, hypocritical. Award, yeah, yeah it, it's so hypocritical. You're like, wait, like who who is it even for? Like who is, you know, it's not like in France for the César, where yes, it's for indie movies, not only, but, you know, mainly. Like in the US, it didn't mm. used to be like that. And now it is. So I'm like, what? where do you want to go with that? Especially because when you... Uh, look at the, um, um, you know, like the audience rate. It's not that great, actually. Like people are kind of getting disinterested into, uh, like, from the from the whole Oscars shebang. So, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But like Maria, for them, it's it's not did, like a smart your, move. You did your research, and I'm kind of because I don't I don't know much I don't know much about this, but who is the jury, and who are they selected? Like, it's not necessarily uh, movie professionals, like. No, they are. Are like regular uh, people like you and I? Can no. we get called on to be like no? no they're never, they're ever. people from the industry. Yeah. Um, and like I think yeah. earlier I get a mispronounce the name of the whole organization. Um, that is like kind of like the board of trustees for uh the Oscars, and like uh basically they're called the Academy Governor and. There are like, directors, people, professionals, uh, in the industries, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And like basically they're kind of the, the people who make the rule. And that's how, that's why it's kind of like important that this meeting is happening in April. And Steven Spielberg, because he's like such a big player, is definitely gonna have a say into this. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I, that he says basically is that he thinks that Netflix should compete for the Emmy, but at the same time, I'm like, Netflix is not really a TV channel, so why would they be able to compete at the Emmys but not at the Oscars? That's what I told you earlier. Yeah. It's, because, like, it's just because of the whole like double standard. Yeah, it's whole like TV series and TV in general is for like common people, so we don't care, but we have a say on what's going on the big screen and it's not the same and it's like where does it come from it didn't used to be like that so they just need to stop like seriously <laughs> this is getting ridiculous especially when you see some of the winners from past years and like okay some are well known now obviously but you have some movies that won in previous years and you're like i'm first of all i didn't even see the movie and it it won like best picture or whatever and also, like, are you even gonna rewatch that? No. So why shouldn't you, you know, just uh, reward um, the movies that really made an impact on pop culture? Why is it so kind of dirty in a way to them? It's so. Oh, and also what you were saying earlier about the whole governor thing. Um, I've I've seen like a documentary a while back, um, basically stating that they had also a lot, at least back in the day, because I know they had a shift recently because of the whole Oscar is so white. A hashtag that was so controversial because they mainly had old white dudes voting on things and that's why it was so hard mm -hmm. for diversity to even you know like make a dent um in the whole award process but anyways and so i i've heard that they used to have a lot of actors so that's also what's weird like I, maybe it's not the case anymore but they used to have a lot of actors uh waiting on these things and so why wouldn't actors want that, you know? Like, why wouldn't they want more opportunity? They know how a good, successful Netflix show, what it can do to your career. And, you know, so I, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Especially, like, as you can see now, that before, I think Netflix was more focused on TV shows, kind of documentaries, maybe, like those kind of series of documentary. But now they really took a step forward in... Uh, producing and directing films and movies and you can see that at some 
a festi cinema festival, they would like present their movies, and you have also like big names uh, signing up deals with uh, Netflix, yeah. but not only big names. Uh, I think like one of the things that I like as well with Netflix is I feel like lately there it's always like the same faces that you see in the movies anyway, because we know like they're bankable and all the stuff. And I feel like in Netflix movies that they do, they try to take a bit more risk it's and true. try like to introduce new faces as well. And I don't know if you got that, the same feelings. It's like they also, you know, they have they have, they have local company Netflix. You know, there's like some kind of Netflix production Korea, Netflix production France. You even have like next Netflix production India. Like they have so for for so many different countries, and so it promotes a content that you would never see. Normally, if you're not on Netflix, like, never would, like, you would not have Indian movie in your local theater, you know what I mean? And you, now you can get movies and shows from so many different, like, cultural backgrounds, mm -hmm. which I think is also super interesting because you discover a new actor and, like, they sa they're they saving also shows that were cancelled by other TV channel, God knows why. And that's why it's so refreshing because, like, you can get anything, like, anything you want is on Netflix, like... Like, regardless of the way, is it, is this movie gonna make money or like, I feel they allow themselves much more creativity. And as Claire was saying, like, they can take more risk mm -hmm. because they're really independent in the way they, they produce and share their content because they're sharing on their own platform. I agree. But also, and yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, just to come back to the topic of Seventh Pink Bird and all, I think it's simply because it seems very fixed on a film is something that comes out in the theater mm -hmm. and the rest is should be considered TV shows or TV films. But I think really is it's just a fear of change. Like there's nothing to add to to his argument. Like he has no argument. It's just a fear of change. Everybody's actually giving him shit for <laughs> what he said and I'm pretty sure his campaign is not gonna be followed. Yeah. Um, um well I hope so. But I don't know. I think like there are like some who are, who are like a bit like, I think it's divided because I could remember as well that in France, there were also concerns about Netflix. We all remember that a Cannes Festival, yeah, but they it's didn't want because Netflix competing, it's only uh, because competing of French, for the official competition. French protectionism and like the monopoly of Canal Plus. It's because we actually have law in France. And I think it's good because we do produce like good friend show but it's mostly like public tv that, that you have quotas of the number of french content that has to be broadcasted yeah it, it is no, true it is, it's the same but like it, because if you compare uh, to other countries even in europe a lot of them don't have their own cinema anymore like at least not you know mm. as big as the french cinema maybe you have like the italian cinema still but i mean beside that it's yeah. like mm. all the movies maybe and less. that's it but I would say that, you know what, overall, it's, I don't even understand why this conversation is taking place because from the minutes where we had like this whole, um, series shift kind of, you know, TV series 2.0 with big, uh, directors to, you know, like producing, uh, TV series and also A-list actors going, you know, for smaller, like what we at the time we call smaller roles because it was on TV, but now it's like, I mean, when you see House of Cards, when you see like David Fincher now producing like, um, is it Mindhunter? Like, it, it, it's irrelevant, seriously. Like at this, yeah, but I don't agree because like, t like, like, um, you know, all I'm a Twin Peak, Twin Peaks freak. Like, I really love the show Twin Peaks, yeah. and yeah. they're actually like, I think the what you said about like TV shows becoming like, uh, like more popular than movie and having very important name TV show. It actually started with Twin Peaks and it's from the 1990. So I think it's actually a very ancient, like not very ancient because we're not dinosaurs, but I think it's an older phenomenon that people realize it is. No, no, it is. Because it I mean, is. Twin, I'm not, I'm Twin not Peaks saying, is David Lynch. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not. I'm saying that like for a while, uh, it was better considered to, like if you were an A-list actor, you would mm -hmm. like obviously take the project that maybe could get you an Oscar or at least a mm. bigger public recognition and also more money. These days, you can make so much money, you know, being on TV or at least on Netflix or whatever. So that's why I'm saying mm. about this whole paradigm shifts. It's not necessarily yeah, like, I know, I know that in the ninth. 
I, I th- you maybe. still have like because everyone calls like the 2010s era like the golden age of TV series. So I'm not saying there was none before. I'm not saying I don't think I don't <laughs> think it's true. I think it's what's much more with Twin Peaks and the X Files, and I think it's the golden era started in the 1990s. And what we had in 2010 was a revival of the golden era mm-hmm. because after those. I- big big show that mm-hmm. actually Twin Peaks introduced the concept of like having an intrigue carried over uh, oh, yeah, right. several episodes that, so that a whole season is an intrigue and we had amazing show like that and uh, X5 followed and then I'm sorry I'm gonna get so so much fire from that but then it can that decreased into easy comedy with shows that I really don't like like Friends and shit <laughs> this kind of show that with like you know the rom-com like ah, fake laugh and that I, mm, TV show, they lost so much I, of their quality. I, 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 do, I do disagree I with you, yeah. Alia, because I do think that you're right. Uh, Twin Peaks definitely started something, but I think it just started it. And now it's become more common to see like big screen actors accepting roles in TV where yeah, before that's, that's it wasn't really the case. Yeah, that's what I'm and saying, yeah. I think that it has become more predominant today because you see that television invests more and more in TV series and then you can see it as well because now you have like ser- TV TV shows like they have their own festival as well and they're mm. like heavily promoted because people are really really behind it and I do think that now TV like TV shows not all the time but most of the time think give more interesting and more complex characters that you can see in some movies because they have like this time to develop the yeah. characters and in a way it's way more interesting so maybe Twin Peaks like did started it but I think it's way more common now yeah yeah, to yeah have, of like, course it's more common they started this whole teams. genre but what I'm saying is like when Muriel was saying like it's like it's, they started the whole genre and then it kind of disappeared we should look into why and so they, and it was picked up more recently again, uh, with like, now we have like crazy psychological, like with very, like you said, very in-depth, uh, analysis of character, et cetera. But that's not a new phenomenon. Like it became more common, but it's not new. And you always had like, I mean, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? The guy with the long eyelashes who is in Twin Peaks. He's a super famous actor and he was already very, very famous. Uh, uh, is he like the guy who played then in Desperate Housewives? Yes. No, so oh, I forget his name. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I exactly. see his face and I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, K- uh, Makla, Makla, Mac something, Makla Han. Listen, listen. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no. I think it's he will always like be that. Orson, like the, the husband of, of Brie. <laughs> this great part. No, he's no, he'll I'll, always be. Come he'll on, always he be wasn't Agent Twin Peaks. Obviously, will always be Agent Cooper. I'm just kidding. But like to me right now, I can't remember his my love name. Black and I'm just like, yeah, Leah, this is too much. Like, <laughs> you, you see, this is why. <laughs> this is why nothing goes our way ever. Because <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I only drink black coffee because of this guy. <laughs> just him. Just this <laughs> one. Oh my god. Yeah, just him. Before I used to put milk like a fool, but like so stupid to put milk. <laughs> like actually, a fool. It's, it's so bad for your well, you have to, for your heart to put milk in it. Actually, so like if you it's really yeah, bad, if yeah. you have Is to it? put milk, like put like you know like a plant based milk. Something like almond or whatever. Mm. Anyways, anyways, this is mm. not a PSA. What are we? <laughs> this is not. This is not what we're talking about. But yeah, I think we all agree. So, like Leah said, Twin Peaks started it for sure. You had some quality, quality show um, afterwards, mm. but it was more like peppered, you know, throughout the tw- the two thousands. And then there was a revival, and now it's the new age, the yeah. new golden era. These days, I think we yes. can all agree on that, right? I agree. Okay. Yeah, mm, I agree with that. Definitely. Okay. I'm I'm the summary girl. Like, <laughs> I'm just here to summarize. Yeah, you are. You are the summary girl. But anyway, I think it would be really interesting to see. If there are any other big directors who would come forward and say, like, yeah, I agree with Steven Spielberg, uh, because I know that, like, right now, I think, uh, Martin Scorsese oh. is, like, prepping up a movie, um, oh. with Netflix. Well, so I, I, I was it's about interesting to do because... No, that's cool. That's cool, Martin. No, no, but I mean, ah, it's interesting so because Spielberg you have, like, alone, different Anna. views. Yeah. Uh, like, for, I know that he stepped forward. He said that, but, I think he wouldn't have said it if he did 
there was no one having mm-hmm. his back. No, but because the conversation like, is being entitled yeah, to say yeah, anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, literally. Yeah, I it think... is. But I think it's been like something that people, like some professionals, have been talking about for a while. You know, you know what? And... I'm all about. I'm all about disruption. Yeah. And this is why Netflix is where they are today because they just did their thing. I'm like a big yeah. believer in yeah. if like why try to shimmy yourself into you know like a place that's too tight for you trying to accommodate when you can just create your own thing like i was saying to claire because we were yeah. talking about it it's not on the same level at all but it's still an important conversation i was saying you know what they did for like on youtube you can this youtube and youtubers you know like all all you want but in the end it's still a platform that makes so much money right there's so much money that goes into it there's mm such mm. an audience for it right so obviously they wouldn't you know get their own category in like um the oscars or the emmys or whatever right but you still have some quality production on on there still so because of that they created their own festival their not festival but their own uh award ceremony the streaming ceremony and like yeah, so ceremony. they have their own thing and i i think it's better this way like why would this try to accommodate to like the the emmys or the, the god knows like the oscars or whatever like this doesn't make any sense yeah. like at some point it's like in not only for the movies and and like the tv series and and so on but in a lot of other topics and era and areas you can see that now there's yes there's big monopoly like um monopolies like yes but you also have mm. a lot of smaller and that that's also what's ironic because it's not it's not small like when you think youtube even if you don't regard the streamies as something of quality it's still important for a lot of people at this level so it's yeah. just create your own thing especially if you're like part of you're at the intersection you, you you're basically you know like um a people of color or maybe someone who's part of the lgbtq uh plus community or whatever just create your own thing because they won't give it to you or even if you're just a woman let's be let's be realistic here like seriously yeah they won't include it yeah so yeah because i think you you have a good point uh muriel regarding this because anyway youtube they started like with their new premium service they now create their own TV series. I've never watched any of them. I don't know if you've watched any of them. Just one. Uh, just one. But th- there is like definitely like more and more people want to be like Netflix because they know Amazon, it works. Yeah. They have, they have like yeah, Amazon Prime. You have Hulu. You have like so mm. many things. Um, Disney is gonna launch a platform crazy. also. That's Disney. Crazy. Uh, they're gonna you have do like all my in info and shit. I think in France you have like. Uh, something that is done by a uh, studio canal which is like yeah, a huge yeah. uh, french oh, distributor yeah. like not not even french because it's actually between france germany and the and uk they produce movies as well and like they distribute them like all around europe's like a major player so they have yeah. all those entities who on a channel like netflix model so there's definitely something that could be done there and yeah, as I said, like the Oscars, like basically the people who vote there, they're like retire retiree professional from the cinema. So you can oh, imagine how old no. they are as well. They're so retiring. I feel like they're, they're older. Yeah, they're That's old. Retiring. So I think oh, like there's yeah. I think there's like kind of a disconnect between those people who see like yeah, cinema is still like the same as twenty years ago, but it's not no. the case obviously. Yeah, the case and I think it would be a mistake to not acknowledge that the industry has changed and there are like new players who can also bring some something nice and just check things up because competition can be nice sometimes. I feel like I'm yes. like uh, such a capitalist start no, no, but and, I like, totally agree on you on the this one. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's because it promotes also diversity like Mara said diversity city of contents you know if everybody has the possibility to start their own uh, their own show their own movie outside of the the let's say the main player it's it's good for everybody it's good for them it's good for the actors it's good for the producer it's good for the audience uh like i don't know like 
it's a good thing and I don't know why everybody's freaking out about them or feeling threatened. Like the fact that it's Steven Spielberg who's like 72, I think, who is the, literally only one complaining about this. To me, it's pretty... No, but it's just, like, a, like I said, like at the very beginning, it's just an old world versus new world kind of thing. It's like, yes. seriously... Like in many other different uh, uh, like areas exactly. of life, it's always like old world feeling threatened by new disruptive uh, sh- schemes as Muriel explained and it's just like it was the same with music uh, like with when Spotify had arrived and everybody oh my God, freaked out the whole out. Grammy situation is uh, so similar as well oh my god yeah it's exactly the same mm. actually and oh. it's just yeah, it's just people being threatened like they always are they always are yeah you know? <sighs> anyways I think we can we can wrap <laughs> up for this first episode right guys yeah yeah I think we can okay So, okay, let me know if I say something wrong, because as you say, like, you say B and I hear uh, Z, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is true. We were talking about Netflix, mm-hmm. right? And how Spielberg launched the latest controversy because he's going to present a motion to the Academy Board <laughs> uh, about <laughs> the possibility, like the option of preventing uh, movies out of Netflix or other similar platform to compete into those the award ceremony based on the fact that they are not out in the theater. I'm sure he's going to invent a bunch of new criteria what these people shouldn't compete. And so we try to understand why he would move like why you he would make a move like this and why why make a statement like that, especially because it's recent but it seems it's not very well received nor supported by other important players in, in the industry because as you explained. Uh, I think it was Claire or Muriel, I can't remember, Scorsese is actually moving to work with Netflix. So, um, and I think, Muriel, you really had a good point when you spoke about disruptive uh, new scheme, putting into question the old model. So I think it's, it's all this is about. Mm-hmm. I agree, I agree. Yeah, so I guess we'll see what the outcome would be in April when they will have this meeting. And yeah. let's hope that something good will come out of it that there will like people like speaking up and i do hope that there will be like some people from this old world as we as we said that would come forward and support netflix at least it would be a good thing i think to see that not everything is like frozen and everything has to be like you know kept by the well-established ones Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. yeah let's see otherwise i think like netflix just gotta be fine even if they're not with the oscars yeah i agree They'll just launch their own ceremony or once to be honest. <laughs> yeah, at this point, they could. They could. But yeah. yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, it was our first, very first episode. So I, we really, really hope you guys Yay. like it. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. This podcast was brought to you by Claire Kingay, Leanna Cash, and Muriel Vincent. All the sources and other materials mentioned during the show can be found on our website, missingsoundspodcast.com. If you like this episode and want to support the show, please leave us a review on iTunes or anywhere you might be listening to this podcast. You can slide in our DMs on Twitter at missing underscore sounds with a Z. For business inquiries, please visit missingsoundspodcast.com. Our music is by David Cutter and Joao Navis. The missing sounds, jackets, and visuals are by Eva Kamchitz. Thank you for tuning in, and take care, guys. Peace!